Weather forecasting dates back thousands of years. The rain showers and thunder showers along that frontal system and that wide band of fairly heavy snows. Here's the latest weather report. Fair with increasing clouds. The other showers on the map are down in Florida along the eastern peninsula. Around 650 BC, Babylonians realized that different cloud formations were associated with certain short-term weather conditions. Aristotle wrote Meteorological in 340 BC explaining how the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, could mingle in layers and that heat could cause water to evaporate. The discoveries and overall understanding of the atmosphere continued on a slow and steady journey. Galileo invented the thermometer in 1593 after realizing that gases expand and contract when heated and cooled. The 1800s saw some advancements in the understanding of high and low pressure systems, but farmers were still relying on frogs in jars to signal incoming rain. So many tree frogs in so many jars. Focus. Though the thorough yet incomplete understanding of the atmosphere we have today has hundreds of contributors over the past few millennia, one man in particular is credited with making weather forecasting practical. And that man is Admiral Robert Fitzroy. Fitzroy had a very interesting life. Born in Suffolk, England, he entered the Royal Navy at age 13 where he embarked on a two-year voyage aboard the HMS Owen Glendower. He was promoted to lieutenant in 1824, then shortly thereafter sailing to Tierra del Fuego and Rio de Janeiro to assist in carrying out a hydrographic survey. During this survey, he taught a few Fuegan natives English and the morals of Christianity in hopes they would become missionaries for their tribe. The captain of the Beagle became severely depressed and shot himself, leaving Fitzroy to be promoted as captain. He navigated back to England in 1830 and cemented his reputation as a commander. Wanting to return to Tierra del Fuego on a missionary trip in 1831, he began to search for a traveling companion. This man had to have similar scientific knowledge and tastes and make good use of the trip to conduct research in natural history. Fitzroy finally settled on one man, to whom he promptly gave the book Principles of Geology by Charles Lyell before departure. This man was Charles Darwin. They got along as well as you would expect two scruffy men to get along during a five-year journey. Fitzroy had quite a temper, to which Darwin nicknamed hot coffee and described as often borderlining on insanity. The land surveys and longitudinal measurements taken on the voyage were pretty accurate, but most of the missionary posts failed, either by getting looted or the newly converted missionaries going back to their native traditions and refusing to come back to England. He won a medal from the Royal Geographical Survey in 1837, but his impact on meteorology didn't come until later in life. He returned to Britain in 1848 after being elected the governor of New Zealand. Retiring from active service due to ill health, Fitzroy was then elected to the Royal Society, which was the National Scientific Institution of the United Kingdom. In 1854, he was elected as Chief of the Meteorological Statist to the Board of Trade, tasked with managing the collection of weather data at sea. This was great news for him, as he had been left with ill-suited employment since his wife fell sick in 1850. And after several recommendations by his colleagues that he be appointed for an Atlantic tidal survey fell through, he was happy to once again be working in his field. Fitzroy began focusing on producing meteorological instruments for ships as well as compiling and archiving observations for further analysis. These collected observations were made into what he called synoptic charts, where he discovered it was possible to predict the movement of storms. He also had the idea to design a large barometer, a device used to measure air pressure. These were placed at every port where they could be viewed and analyzed by captains and fishermen before voyage, many of which are still visible today. Then, in 1859, something happened that would define the last few years of Fitzroy's life. On October 25th, 100 plus mile an hour winds struck the English Channel lasting for over 24 hours. This caused 133 shipwrecks, most notably the sinking of the Royal Charter near Mulfrey, killing over 450 people. Being a sailor himself, Fitzroy was distraught over the tragedy and wanted to find a way to make weather prediction possible to promote safety at sea. In 1860, he created the first prognostic storm warning service using an aerial clinoscope, focusing on giving notice of expected winds via a relatively new invention, the telegraph. Having only four observation stations all within the Netherlands, he sought to expand to a wider coverage area. By September 1860, 13 different coastal ports had telegraphic observation stations with dedicated clerks to interpret and relay the information. Despite the general inexperience and lack of training from the observers, the whole operation saw pretty good success from the get-go. 
On February 6, 1861, the first gale warning was issued, however it was largely ignored. Consequently, many vessels at Shields who ignored the warning were wrecked, resulting in many casualties. Fitzroy issued eight more warnings that week and claimed that it saved many lives. The warnings used abbreviated terminology that gave a list of places followed by cone for gale and drum for successive gale. The receiving station would then erect the appropriate signal on a tall staff. These symbols, being conical in nature, have the advantage of looking the same from all horizontal directions of observation. Over the next few years, Fitzroy began to face a lot of criticism from three sides in particular. The first were his contemporaries, who felt he had failed to use the scientific method. This included a group of astrometeorologists who disproved of Fitzroy's forecasting methods and preferred using planetary and lunar observations to make such predictions. The second group included some meteorology entrepreneurs who sought to profit off forecasting and viewed Fitzroy's public service as a threat. The last group was mainly ship manufacturers who profited off shipwrecks due to poor weather at sea. Although the vast majority of seafarers actually showed their support for Fitzroy, the criticism really started to get to his mental health. The pressure came to a head when the wreck department of the Board of Trade set up its own observation stations with the sole purpose to check the accuracy of Fitzroy's warnings. These reports were then published. The stress was theorized to accelerate his decline in health and loss of hearing. And on April 30th, 1865, he walked into his dressing room, locked the door, and cut his throat with a razor. The Board of Trade investigated the work of Fitzroy's department and presented a report to Parliament in April of 1866. It pretty much denounced his entire life's work, and suggested that daily forecasts be terminated immediately. Unfortunately, it took until the next century for the meteorology office to scientifically advance. And just because Fitzroy didn't make it his entire life's mission to study the changes in weather doesn't discredit any of the advancements he made. Daily forecast and current weather conditions are now available for almost anywhere in the world. And we can trace it all back to one man who was able to connect public communication and weather in an efficient manner for the time. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more. Check out my Etsy store if you would like. Peace. Well, if anybody remembers, about two years ago on the Corey Corals video, I was moving out of a shitty apartment. I moved into an even shittier house. Duct tape is blocking nearly every panel in the house with mouse burrows underneath. But yeah, this was the room in the attic where I spent a lot of late nights editing. And that's the view I had out back. And honestly, the only reason why I'm going to miss this place is because it's where I spent about 50% of my time in college. And I have a lot of memories here. But other than that this place.